Okay, so this video today is about setting up call tracking or phone tracking, if you will, for a company who has more than one location that they're advertising their business for on Google or whether that's on Facebook or another PPC platform. Um, of course, you can track any of your traffic going to your website to see how effective it is compared to other forms of your traffic that you've got coming in as well using phone tracking. And um, you know, if you're not using phone tracking now, I can only most you know, and, and you're getting out of the responses that you are expecting out of your paid advertising, more than 10% is coming from the phone. I absolutely cannot recommend more getting phone tracking set up for your business. Setting up phone tracking for a business is easy. I actually recommend CallRail. It's the one that I use, the call tracking software that I use on all of our clients' campaigns. Set it up uh, hundreds of times now for clients, and uh, anybody who has more than 10% of their uh, response coming from the phone, uh, you know, even if someone takes purchases through their website or selling something, let's say over $300, we'll also do call tracking because a lot of those call that data from you get coming in from people asking questions and then ordering over the phone, or even if they have to go through the website again also provides data to be able to narrow down our campaigns, which is the reason why we do it. But where it's most valuable of all, of all is for businesses that do lead generation, whether that's a national service business, whether that's a, you know, a, or a national uh, a company that sells products but does lead generation, or a local service business. Um, and it's pretty straightforward. You just basically, for most of the call track, I, and I've used you know, quite a few of them, the call tracking metrics. Um, there's, uh, you know, Mongoose metrics now is what, you know, the, the company name is called. And uh, it's all pretty much predicated on the same thing. You take a piece of JavaScript code, it's a single line of code, you put it on all the pages of your website. Uh, you go in to configure with the call tracking provider and tell them the number that's on your site now to look for to then swap in the tracking number that then shows up on your website for your users that looks identically to the number you have on your site before and then when people call, the software identifies that somebody calls and then and then feed back the meta, what I call metadata back to your campaign so you can optimize your campaigns to scale up the parts that are working more or if you actually to go ahead and do that, which you should, and scale down the parts that are or maybe even shut off parts that are not working at all and with only Part of your data, let's say if you only track your forms, you're only getting you know, an opportunity. You're not getting your money's worth out of your advertising. If you're not getting the return you want on your advertising, all you got to do is you eventually will get it with enough data coming in. So that's why call tracking is important. But uh, so anyway, it's, it's pretty straightforward to set up call tracking for any business, regardless of what it is, unless you have multiple phone numbers on your website uh, or you know, more specifically what this video is about is if you got multiple locations. But if you anytime you have more than one number on your site, realistically, you'll have to use a, a different process for setting this up. And CallRail, it's kind of a, using this, that particular software, which I'd say probably more than half of people use now, is an advanced tracking feature system that needs to be set up and partially through there on their end that you can't even do yourself, which is what I wanted to let people know about in this video. So, you know, with that said, you know, let's say you have 10 grand a month to spend on a Google Ads campaign and you have four locations. Uh, you're, you're a, uh, a uh, let's say, a outpatient hospital. You would track all your look, but uh, you know, a lot of times people have considerations, they have staff in different places, the business is more slower in one place than another. So they'll push part of their budget to whatever slow, they're losing money because they have overhead. But assuming that you don't have that problem and all, you know, you basically are running on all cylinders in all your different locations and you were just trying to push your budget towards whatever is producing the highest return, then you can use the call tracking to help you figure out where the budget should go. You track your, you know, like your form fills, you know, the contact form on, on your site and the phone calls, and you feed that data into your ad account, and then you can see what's producing the lowest cost for conversion, which would be either the phone call or the form fill, and then push more of your budget there, 
or maybe most or all of your budget there and not so much in the other locations because that's where you're getting the highest you know, bang for your buck. So you should, but with that, then a lot of people are going to treat all, you know, they're going to take that 10 grand, they're going to split it up 2,500, 2,500, 2,500, 2,500. And it's really idiotic because you might be able to get twice as much revenue from that budget, from that same 10 grand, if you just used your data to tell you which of the locations to push, push a majority of your budget to, or the, the top two or top three of the top four in the example that I gave you. But absolutely, you should not treat your locations the same way, and that's why you do call tracking. Um, and I, I, beyond that, though, I created three things that I wanted to mention about call tracking, specifically for multiple locations, or if you have a site which has multiple numbers on it, which maybe you have one number for, uh, you know, it's one type of sales and another for different type of sales. Obviously, for like tra uh, support and stuff like that, you don't need to track those numbers. But when you, when you, regardless of how many numbers it is that you need to track or how many locations you have, you'll still have to, which if, by the way, if you do any kind of call tracking, you'll have to determine the type of tracking that they have. There's two main categories of tracking uh, that you can do. One of which is called, for number two here, static, and then one of which is called dynamic. And static is basically, to, to give you a summary of what that is, the call tracking provider gives you just a, a flat out phone number that you're going to put on your site and then every time someone calls it's going to show up in your dashboard on you know, like your call rail dashboard or your mongrels metrics dashboard and technically that can feed data back into uh, the your Google Analytics account but it's going to be non-specific as to where that call came from what, what, what was the source of the traffic because it, and the phone number does not rotate. It's just going to simply be there, and the, the, all the system can, you know, figure out is is that somebody called it, and um, of course, within their system, if you have your UTM tags on your URL, which uh, if you don't know what that is, you can look that up. It will actually show where the where the call came from on some systems, but for the most part. The other type of uh, call tracking that you could do is called the dynamic, where you set up that, you have the JavaScript code, for all practical purposes, you should use dynamic for everything, uh, based upon my opinion, just because, you know, for the cost of it, there's no real way that you're not going to get the return out of it, you're losing so much by not using it. Where you, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, that you put a piece of JavaScript code on all the pages of your site, and then you tell the call rail or whatever program you're using to wherever it finds the number on your site, which you tell them the regular number you have, they put it in the tracking number instead. And if there's more than one person on your site at the same time, there's a pool of numbers so that the second number, the second person that's on this, that comes to your site at the same time the first person is there, it gives them a second unique number and the same for the third and fourth and fifth and so on visitors. So they can track each individual visitor separately and then with the coding that goes into your the, the, the consumers, so on their browser, at the end of your URL, with the Google Ads, it does it automatically for you through what is called auto-tagging, but through like, if you, if you want to track Facebook and so on and so forth, you add those UTM, it's called custom UTM tags at the end of your URL, and then the call tracking provider, when somebody calls, can then pass or it, basically it posts or grabs the data and then as to what was in the URL there, which your browser will then update the, the UTM tag with the tags with the information that uh, they, you know, um, or helps push that data to the call tracking provider about where you came from, whether that's, um, you, you can track, it's a little hard to explain, but um, you know, what campaign a, a person uh, came from when they clicked on your ads, or what keyword they clicked on, uh, or what they typed in, I should say, before they clicked on your ads, or what ad they specific type, specifically typed in. And you can set that up through manual UTM tagging. Uh, of course, Google has auto tagging, so it's a little bit easier, but bottom line, um, through the power of the call tracking software and the UTM tags that are there, it can tell you where that call came from, and 
different aspects of what that user's traits are so that, and then with that, you're going to get some data inside your call tracking software, but then the, the, the greater benefit of it is it can then, from the call tracking software, because you link up your call tracking software to your, your, your Google Ads account, to your Facebook, post that data to your Ads account, you can see different aspects of the age demographics that generated the call, you know, the income demographic, uh, you know, demographics of where the call was generated and so forth, and the, the, the most important data for most people, like on a local campaign that has multiple locations would be what keyword they typed in and what zip code they, were, they came from, so you can really drill down your advertising. The dynamic um, phone numbers, you, you can do you can do all of that, and so therefore that's why you want to go for the, the, the dynamic key, the call tracking, not the static. Just wanted to throw that out there and make sure that it's a little something that a lot of people don't necessarily know how to distinguish when they aren't dealing with this stuff every day. But yeah, with that, going in, so let's say going back to the problem at hand, let's see you have multiple locations, you have multiple phone numbers on your site. If you do the call tracking setup like the call tracking providers tell you to do it, which is to put that piece of code on your site, the JavaScript code, and tell it what number to rotate out, it'll do so, but only on the one number. What if you have multiple numbers you want to track? Well, it's not so easy as to create what is called a dynamic pool, phone number pool for each phone number, at least through CallWhale, but also with other providers. There's some uh, advanced configuration that needs to be done in order to have the, pro the call tracking program say, Okay, I'm gonna and if, if I see this number, I'm gonna replace it with the, a phone number A from pool A. And if I see this other number, I'm gonna show it the number from pool B, so they can track individually uh, each different phone number that's on your website. And uh, you know, initially when I had ran into the problem several years ago, I struggled with it figuring it out because it doesn't work to just automatically set up the multiple, like you would automatically think you wanted to track more than one number, you would just put up two dynamic pools in your call tracking provider, at least with CallRail, which I know specifically for sure you have to do this, but also on the other call tracking providers, um, I believe you still have to do so, that uh, it would just work. It would just, whatever number uh, is in that pool that you, it's called a swap target, that uh, you designate that you want the tracking number to replace on your site, would work, you, I have found for call rail, you have to actually call them and say that I'm, I have multiple numbers on my site because I have multiple locations. Please turn on uh, the ability or activate the ability to do multiple call tracking pools, dy multiple dynamic call tracking pools. They go ahead and do it on their site, then you'll set up a dynamic call tracking pool for each individual number that you want tracked on the site, and th then you're done. The dynamic pools don't be, you know, the cost, at least through CallRail, most of the providers, it's like 30 bucks a month, 40 bucks a month. The static numbers are like $3. So you may get fooled and say, why, do, why am I paying all this extra money? Well, you don't get all that metadata that can be, you can use to drill down your campaigns with the static numbers. So that's the first thing to, to consider. If you have multiple numbers on your site to track, you certainly want to do that because this data is gold. It's the difference between two and three X results for your budget. Literally, you're talking about not having all the numbers tracked if you have multiple locations. And given the scenario like I gave you before, where you can decide out of that 10K budget where to push things. Um, but uh, so as far as the cost considerations, it's always going to be worth it. Assuming that you're the type of person that's going to use the data, a lot of people either don't get the data, or if they get the data, they're not going to go through each little, uh, what is called dimension of the account, so you can set unique bids as to what zip codes are doing the best, the income demographics that are doing the best, the gender, the age demographics, the time of the day, the day of the week, so on and so forth, what state they're from potentially, depending on what business it is, which gives you really great results, which is, and it is also something I do on every single campaign that we offer, which is part of the reason why we guarantee results here, because I can tell you in advance, 99% of people are not going to go ahead and just do what I just described to you that you should do. But uh, so with that, um, 
you anytime you so that is a the process for tracking more you know if you have more than, more than one location to track each individual location using call tracking it takes a little bit of you know, getting a contact with your call tracking provider to, to activate the ability to set up multiple dynamic uh, call tracking profiles in your system to be able to feed that data call metadata data into your call tracking program and then push that back up to your you know your Facebook or Google or whatever you're using Bing and be able to drill down your advertising to what's actually going to get you better than average or less and take from the less than uh, average stuff move it to the above average producing stuff for your account so you're going to get a much higher return on your overall ads so that is a uh, I'll wrap it up with that I have lots of other videos like this where I talk about the you know, PPC strategy, how to, you're going in depth, how to do different things for your brand, and um, how to get really great results with PPC. The stuff that goes well beyond what other you know, uh, channels are going to provide to you. So go ahead and check those out. And if you like in-depth information like this, go ahead and subscribe. But um, I appreciate your time watching this video today as well. And just wait for the next video uh, next week when I produce it.